I pulled a nice reading for us tonight out of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, where he's kind of talking about uh, well a lot of things, but but uh, certainly the path of knowledge as it relates to non-monastics and uh, and just some good habits for growing a spiritual life. And so he says, self-knowledge is discussed in the Ashtravakra Samhita. The non-dualists say Soham, that is, I am the Supreme Self. This is the view of the sannyasi of the Vedantic school, or of the, the monks. But this is not the right attitude for householders, for folks who aren't monastics, he says. You should not have a mantra, I am that, or uh, I am the Supreme Self. And he gives a reason, he says, but it's not right for, for the householder attitude, who are conscious of doing everything themselves. That being so, how can they declare I am that, the actionless supreme self? According to the non-dualists, the self is unattached. Good and bad, virtue and vice, and other pairs of opposites cannot in any way injure the self, though they undoubtedly afflict those who have identified themselves with the body. Smoke soils the wall, certainly, but it cannot in any way affect space. Following the Vedantists of this class, Krishna Kishore used to say, I am Ka, meaning the Akasha. Being a great devotee, he could say that with some justification, but it is not becoming for others to do so. You know, really what he's saying is that this practice of I am that, even though that's the highest realization, the highest truth, that we are, in fact, all of this, uh, very much like in a dream, you know, at night, that you as a character in the dream are actually the whole dream, but you've moved your identity out of the self, the sleeper, and moved it into the particular dreamed person. Uh, so you are a part of the dream rather than, than the dream itself. Uh, but, the, but the truth remains. And so someone, you know, wandering around in their dream without knowing that they're dreaming it's not proper for them to go around saying, oh, I'm the sleeper, I'm the sleeper, I'm the sleeper, because they have no, no knowledge of the sleeper. Uh, they have no idea of the sleeper. They only think of themselves within the dream. And so he's saying that this practice of, of identifying yourself with the Supreme Self is for someone who's very advanced and has purified their mind to the point of not being identified with their body. Uh, they see that the body is separate from themselves completely and are not troubled by it. But he does go on here in the next paragraph to give us a great insight for how we can live and what we should repeat to ourselves all the time. He says, but to feel that one is a free soul is very good. By constantly repeating, I am free, I am free, verily a man becomes free. On the other hand, by constantly repeating, I am bound, I am bound, he certainly becomes bound to worldliness. The fool who says only, I am a sinner, I am a sinner, verily drowns himself in worldliness. One should rather say, I have chanted the name of God. How can I be a sinner? How can I be bound? It's a wonderful teaching. And this idea of freedom, you know, we have to find out what freedom is, first of all. You know, most of us think, oh, freedom is the freedom to do whatever I want to do. But see, the self doesn't have a desire, doesn't have a need, doesn't feel any sense of lack. And so our desires belong to the body and our desires belong to the mind. And so to, to be free means to be free of desire, to need nothing, to simply be content where you are, to sit in the bliss of the self. You know, you are that ever free, ever pure, ever blissful, immortal, unchangeable self. Come to know this by dis disidentifying with mind and its content, disidentifying with body, and finding that silent, quiet space within where you can know what you are without anything telling you. And uh, from there, sing your song of freedom. Be free. Be free from any attachment, meaning don't identify with anything in this world. You are not a particular here. You are the entire thing in and of itself. So pull up the roots of those weeds of me and mine in your mind that have entangled you into this identity, this identity with a body and a mind that will die, that will have an end, and set free that immortal self, that ever-free background of what you are. <laughs>